Hello, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will be discussing necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis, also called flesh sheeting disease, is a highly aggressive and potentially life threatening infection where bacteria can enter the skin through a wound and destroy the surrounding tissue. So, whether you're a concerned parent or just curious about this fascinating disease, watch on to learn more about necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis is a highly aggressive and potentially life-threatening soft tissue infection. The condition typically begins with the introduction of harmful bacteria into the skin, often through a break in the skin barrier, such as a wound or surgical site. Once the bacteria enter the tissue under the skin, they rapidly multiply and release toxins that destroy the surrounding tissues. These toxins can damage blood vessels which impair blood flow, this reduced blood supply prevents adequate oxygen and nutrient delivery to the affected area, resulting in tissue death. The most common causative agents include group A streptococcus and staphylococcus aureus, which account for approximately 80% of cases, but other bacteria may also be involved, and it is possible that multiple bacteria cause an infection. Initially, the immune system recognizes the bacterial invasion and initiates an inflammatory response to try and fight off the infection. However, in necrotizing fasciitis, the immune response often becomes overwhelmed, or the response to the infection is so strong that the immune system starts to attack the tissues it is trying to protect. As the infection progresses, the bacteria spreads rapidly within the tissue surrounding the muscles and blood vessels, leading to further tissue destruction. The infected tissues start to die as they lose their blood supply and may develop a characteristic foul odor. The combination of bacterial toxins, tissue death, and uncontrolled inflammation results in a rapidly deteriorating condition. If not promptly treated, necrotizing fasciitis can lead to systemic complications such as sepsis, multiple organ failure, and even death. The rapid progression and potential for severe outcomes highlight the importance of early recognition, immediate medical intervention, and surgical removal of necrotic tissue. It can be challenging to tell the difference between necrotizing fasciitis and other skin infections, so having a high suspicion index is important. Symptoms that may suggest someone has developed necrotizing fasciitis may include severe pain. The affected area is often associated with intense pain, disproportionate to the initial injury or wound. The pain may be localized initially but can rapidly spread as the infection progresses. Swelling and redness. The infected area typically exhibits rapid swelling, redness, and inflammation. The skin may appear shiny and stretched, with a purplish or dusky discoloration. As the infection progresses, the skin may become pale or discolored due to tissue necrosis. Skin changes. The skin overlying the affected area may develop a blistering or bullous rash, forming fluid-filled blisters that can rapidly evolve into areas of skin breakdown or ulceration. You may also see color changes as the skin becomes red or purple. Systemic symptoms. As the infection spreads, individuals may experience systemic symptoms such as fever, chills, sweating, malaise, and general weakness. These symptoms indicate a more severe infection. Rapid progression. Necrotizing fasciitis has a characteristic feature of rapid progression. The signs and symptoms may worsen quickly often within hours or days, leading to a deteriorating condition. Before we continue, I wanted to let you know about our free AI symptom checker, over at mychildshealth.io. Our trained AI symptom checker allows you to enter your child's symptoms, and it will then come up with a list of possible causes, allowing you to explore our articles to find out about the various conditions and understand your child's symptoms. Why not check it out today? A link is in the video description. Diagnosing necrotizing fasciitis can be difficult as it may initially present as a less severe skin infection. However, several diagnostic methods and clinical assessments are used to aid in the identification of this life-threatening condition. A physical assessment. The initial step involves a thorough physical examination and a detailed assessment of the patient's symptoms, medical history, and risk factors. 
the presence of severe pain out of proportion to the wound, rapidly spreading inflammation, and systemic symptoms such as a fever, raise suspicion of necrotizing fasciitis. Blood tests. These are essential for evaluating the patient's overall health status and identifying markers of infection. These may include a complete blood count, C-reactive protein levels, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and blood cultures. An elevated white blood cell count, high CRP levels, and abnormal findings on blood cultures can indicate an ongoing infection. Tissue sampling and biopsy. Surgical exploration and tissue sampling is crucial for confirming the diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis. During surgery, a sample of the affected tissue is taken and sent for laboratory analysis. This helps identify the specific bacteria causing the infection and allows targeted antibiotic therapy. Treating necrotizing fasciitis requires immediate and aggressive management, involving a combination of surgical intervention and antibiotic therapy. Prompt action is crucial to halt the progression of the infection and prevent potentially life-threatening complications. Treatment includes Antibiotic therapy Intravenous antibiotics are administered to target the causative bacteria. Broad-spectrum antibiotics are initially used to cover a wide range of potential pathogens, including Streptococcus pyogenes, Staphylococcus aureus, and anaerobic bacteria. Once cultures and sensitivity results are available, antibiotic therapy may be adjusted accordingly. Combination therapy with multiple antibiotics is often recommended to maximize the coverage against different bacteria. Surgical debridement. Surgical debridement involves the removal of dead and infected tissue in any areas of spreading infection. This procedure helps control the infection, reduces toxin production, and improves blood supply to the affected area. In severe cases, multiple surgical debridements may be necessary. Supportive care. Patients with necrotizing fasciitis may require supportive care measures to address the associated systemic complications. This can include fluid resuscitation to maintain hydration, pain management, and management of any organ dysfunction or sepsis that may arise. The rapid spread of the infection and tissue destruction associated with necrotizing fasciitis can result in severe consequences. Here are some of the complications that can arise. Sepsis. Necrotizing fasciitis can cause sepsis, a systemic condition leading to widespread inflammation and organ dysfunction. Sepsis can be life-threatening if not promptly treated. Organ failure. The infection can lead to the failure of multiple organs, such as the kidneys, liver, lungs, or heart. This can occur due to the spread of toxins and the disruption of blood flow to vital organs. Amputation. In severe cases, Extensive tissue damage may necessitate amputation of the affected limb or body part to prevent the infection from spreading further or to remove dead tissue. Scarring and disfigurement. Healing from necrotizing fasciitis often leads to significant scarring and potential disfigurement, especially if extensive tissue removal or reconstructive surgeries are required. These physical changes can have a significant impact on a person's appearance and self-esteem. Necrotizing fasciitis is not contagious. The leading cause of necrotizing fasciitis is the bacterium group A strep, which naturally lives on the skin. This life-threatening infection is not transmitted through direct human contact or airborne particles. Instead, its occurrence is often linked to underlying factors like weakened immune systems and open wounds. <laughs>